classical Chinese dance show. The Chinese Communist Party hates it. And they'll stop at nothing to shut it down. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Shen Yun, it's a classical Chinese dance show. You've seen Shen Yun advertisements everywhere. Everywhere. And I do mean everywhere. Why so much advertising? In part because the Chinese Communist Party has spent enormous resources trying to suppress the show, threatening theaters, slashing tour bus tires, denying visas, and much, much more. Why does the Communist Party consider this show such a threat? Matt Ganezda sits down with Shen Yun Master of Ceremonies Li Shai Lemish to learn more. Li Shai, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. So the Chinese Communist Party really, really does not like Shen Yun. Uh, they've, for example, sent thugs to slash tour bus tires. I mean, what's up with that? Yeah, so Shen Yun is a performance of traditional Chinese culture, but it's based in New York. That's the first thing they don't like. Here is a celebration of Chinese culture, and it's not under the Chinese Communist regime's monopoly. Second, our mission is to revive traditional Chinese culture. So this is 5,000 years of civilization, stories, history, different virtues that are brought out through the stories. And this is a culture that they spend decades, about 80 years, trying to destroy. Culture revolution, killing off different people, smashing statues, burning books. And here we are, hey, this is a celebration of this culture that you destroyed. Let's bring it back so people can experience what traditional Chinese culture really was about. And this is really intimidating to them because if people reconnect with that culture, be it in China or people outside of China, realize what Chinese culture really was about all this time, then all of a sudden they have some major legitimacy questions because they brought in a regime that's Soviet. It's Marxism, atheism, Darwinism, Maoism, all this stuff. You know, Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics. For Chinese characteristics, you're right, very different from right. these ideas like in Journey to the West of uh, spiritual elevation. Right. And, uh, or so, like the Monkey King stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, exactly, which is a, really a metaphor for a spiritual path. And also, f you know, fighting bad guys. Fighting bad guys is good. Uh, anybody can connect with that. Sure. And so actually, we actually get a lot of uh, correspondence from China, people in China wanting us to perform there. But so here we are, a company that's celebrating Chinese culture, and we can't perform in China. And not only that, they're trying to stop us from performing outside of China. It's interesting we talk about the, the culture because uh, there's this article I read in the uh, Chinese state run Global Times, and it says uh, that it basically claims that Falun Gong is using Shen Yun to uh, push some sort of propaganda. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, was funny because the Chinese Communist Party has been, in the recent years, trying to use Chinese culture to push their propaganda. Right. They have, Are they jealous? <laughs> well, they have all these Confucius Institutes. Right. They do all these different things. And, and the reality is, and uh, uh, you probably have talked about this before, Confucius Institutes, right. in the name of Confucius, which was considered number one bastard uh, during the Cultural Revolution, right. and uh, this, they spent all this time smashing Confucius statues and and just uh, whole, slandering like, Criticize Confucius and yeah. Yao, like propaganda. It was, it was a big right? deal. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, we're all into Confucianism. But what they actually teach there is, uh, there wasn't really a Tiananmen Massacre, uh, Falun Gong, they're really anti-China. And oh, by the way, this is what Chinese characters are. It's not traditional Chinese characters. It's a simplified version. So it's easier for you. It lacks any content, but that's okay. And uh, so yeah, so they've been trying to do this, this whole propaganda blitz and really have a monopoly on Chinese culture. Right, but it's like a very different type of Chinese culture that they're talking about than what you know, you guys and Shen Yun are doing, right? Right, so Shen Yun was established about uh, 13, 14 years ago, end of 2006, with the mission of reviving the real traditional Chinese culture. It started off because there was, uh, like Chinese New Year would come around, uh, usually during the winter, January, February, and uh, people would go want to have a performance. And there was this performance that was done uh, in China in, on CCTV uh, television or in the embassies here outside of China. And these are just like just propaganda blitzes of, hey, the Communist Party is great. And everything was, was literally red. It was all about how great uh, China is under the Communist Party. And so Chinese people overseas would go, and like, this does not represent us or our culture or celebrating anything. Let's have our own show. And so they would start their own performance. And this grew, and the first one was here in Madison Square Garden in 2004 and in 2005, and Radio City 2006 was my first time uh, hosting the performance. And eventually they said, well, let's have our own performance and really bring this culture back to life. And so doing that through classical Chinese dance and music and so on. And so this is really an idea, like, let's go back into 5,000 years of civilization and bring any story, any 
literary figure, any character, be it a UFA or the real story of Mulan, who, by the way, did not speak English, it turns out. Or, really? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And she didn't have a pet lizard dragon also. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's shocking what you discover when you actually go into. Uh, but yeah, uh, stories from Journey to the West, Outlaws of the Marsh, Romans of the Three Kingdoms, the creation, legends of a creation. So these are like all being brought into Shen Yun as different Right, forms. so Shen Yun is saying, hey, let's revive this and bring this back. And so it has the effect of first people outside of China, no matter, no matter how familiar they are with Chinese civilization, they get a sense of, okay, this is a very different perspective on Chinese culture. And this is actually something you can go back and you can read Tang Dynasty poems from the seventh century and get a sense for this. We actually have a story about a famous poet from that period and how he got inspiration. Uh, you have uh, novels like Journey to the West and Romance of the Three Kingdoms and the characters there. And it's not just stories. You have a lot of good versus bad and action and, and you know, warriors and even supernormal abilities and magic, but you also have the virtues and the values behind them, ideas of loyalty and integrity and faith and compassion, tolerance. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Integrity, compassion, like these are not... It's a little different from, from the Confucius communist, Institutes. Communist yeah. Party culture, right? Yeah, a little different. So I can see why they're they're sort of intimidated by Shen Yun. Yeah, and the Falun Gong is a, another part of that. So right. uh, Shen was started by Falun Gong practitioners. A lot of uh, our artists, so Falun Gong was practiced all throughout China. You had people in every sphere. You certainly had workers and farmers and uh, different professions. Right, in the 1990s also. it was like you go to China and there's just people practicing Falun Gong everywhere. Yeah, and you even had people who were top uh, party members. So they didn't see any conflict between being a Falun Gong practitioner and being a communist party member. Like you could be a Republican <laughs> or a Democrat and practice, say, yoga or Pilates. But it's just funny to think about that like from today's perspective. Absolutely, right? yeah. But there were also artists. So you had choreographers and composers and leaders of uh, some of the best orchestras in China. And some of them came outside of China and they said, well, we have these skills. What do we do with them? Because we'd like to bring back this culture. We like to tell people the story of what's happening to Falun Gong in China. And so this company was founded. And so these people brought this together. And then also as part of the performance, alongside the stories that are the traditional culture part and ethnic dances, folk dances, and so on, you also have stories of what's happening to Falun Gong practitioners in China today. There's maybe a couple of pieces. We have about 20 stories every year train different dances. Maybe a couple of them are about the Falun Gong story. And you have a sense of, okay, so these are people meditating in the park, and that maybe is how the story starts, or it's a family. And then, boom, they get pounced on. There's persecution that erupts seemingly out of nowhere. And then they get thrown in jail. And then it's basically a battle of their faith in the face of the persecution and finding inner courage and finding eventually hope. And so this story is now a story that they've been, the CCP, Communist Party, has been trying to hide all these years, now 20 years of persecution. They said, oh, this is not happening, just a small group of people, and we're treating them very nicely, and this is all made up. And here we actually have it on stage at Lincoln Center, Kennedy Center, all over the world. We have VIPs, CEOs, you know, congressmen in the audience, and they're saying, oh, this is actually, and it's depicted very beautifully. Well, but this, this is your problem, because you're taking traditional Chinese values and making them relevant to today. Absolutely. And, it's, right, and this, is, this is the worst possible thing you could do from the Communist Party's perspective. Yeah, because, you know, there's a sense that also this is, in a way, a, a big part of this is like, oh, this is what human culture really was like a long time ago, not just in China, but around the world. Yes, it has this Chinese flair to it and Chinese costumes and all the stories, but these ideas of loyalty, integrity, compassion, right, these are things that are common universally. And so I think people are surprised when they come to see the performance that it's not just a journey into Chinese culture and history, but actually there's something really deep that resonates with people and uh, inspires them and uplifts them. So I want to I wanna get back to, you know, what the Communist Party has done to kind of stop Shen Yun. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the things, actually, in the, in the same Global Times articles, they said that they wanted the Shen Yun performers' names to be, quote, made public so they will be expelled from mainstream Chinese communities. Mm -hmm. Basically, like, they want overseas Chinese, like here in America, to dox Shen Yun performers and cancel them. Yeah. Like, like, is this actually happening? To actually ostracize them or even blacklist them, not allow them to get jobs. Right. Yeah. So, for example, the Chinese Student Scholar Association, CSSA, they're, they're in Columbia, they're in every big university across the country and around the world. They have been very active under the auspices of the Chinese uh, Communist Party's embassies and consulate. Actually, the, the head of the CSSAs in these universities actually kind of a liaison with the embassy and to get directives from them. So they'll bring them out to welcome a leader and maybe get paid to do so. And they'll go and protest Shen Yun and maybe, you know, they're getting paid to do that. And so they've actually been very active in trying to target Shen Yun and trying to stop us. Now, not so, so, so they get these, like, the Chinese student groups to protest, like, a They Shen get Yun Chinese students who are here, have to go back to China, have family back in China, maybe even got a scholarship to be here. And they say, we are representative of China. You have to follow our orders. Here's what you're going to do, or else you're going to be in trouble. But I'm just imagining, like, you know, some, like, foreign government trying to get people to protest Hamilton. 
right? Like that's crazy, right? You no, I've never heard of that happening. But you know, for us, it's kind of a reality. From day one, when we first started in 2006, we've had all these various phenomena. So one thing that they do is, is, is that kind of a protest. Uh, not very common anymore because it's really not successful. Another thing they do is they try to pressure family members of performers who are still back in China. So for example, my MC partner, I'm on stage, I introduced the pieces. There's a, a lady who introduces them with me. She was from Beijing and her parents were still in Beijing and they would get weekly visits from the National Security Bureau saying, we know what your daughter Inside is China. In, in Beijing. They would just come and sit down for a chat uh, at, at their, in the living room and say, we know what your daughter is doing. We don't like it. Uh, have her stop doing it uh, or else everybody's going to be in trouble. Uh, we had a, an Arhu soloist. So this is a person who plays a two-string Arhu, like the Chinese violin. And uh, her husband was jailed while she was with Shen Yun. And so this like is some- for, for her work in Shen Yun? Uh, we don't really know exactly how, but it was definitely for his beliefs. He, they're both Falun Gong practitioners. Okay, and so uh, there's also that, like I'm, it's, it's like a double- There's also that. A, a and we have crime, right? Yeah, and we have people, members of the company who actually experience persecution. They're not the vast majority, but we have people who, who are, were tortured in China. We have people who've lost family members. We have a dancer whose dad was killed when she was an infant and thrown in a ditch. So this, is, this persecution story is, is very relevant to people. But I think what we try to portray on stage is also just the sense of hope and belief. And, and the same with Shen Yun, you know, these, are, these performers have been through this now for 14 years and it's never stopped us. We've grown from one company to now up to seven companies a tour simultaneously. And, uh, and we've, we've put up with a lot. So for example, the first year when we're touring, they would send other performing arts companies to try to compete with us. So they sent like 60 something companies around the world and we'd perform in a theater and they'd be across the street or right next to us at the same time. And we'd go, go to a certain country and they say, uh, yeah, we've already seen Shen Yun. We say, what do you mean? We just got here. I'm like, no, no, no. We, we saw it, you know, like last week and it, it turns out that they got tickets for the other show. So you're saying show. that there was a, a Chinese communist state sanctioned knockoff? I've never heard of that kind of thing. They paid companies to go out just to compete with us. And in, in some cases, actually, we would move the, the show date because of uh, scheduling issues and they would move their show date to correspond to it. And they did this, they did this in LA across the Dorothy Channel. The pavilion that they, they sent out companies here to, to uh, New York. It was just done the first couple of years especially. Then it didn't work because the theaters were empty for them and people weren't buying tickets and there was no competition. And the Shen Yun brand got established. So then they started pressuring theaters to not allow us to perform. So they would write to theaters or even knock on a door. Well, who, who would write to the theaters? The Chinese consulates and embassies. We have this in LA, in New York, in Sydney, in Munich. You know, name, name a, a big city where are, you perform. So are, is the Chinese consulate even allowed to like operate like that on, on uh, U.S. soil? Uh, well, like, th that's a diplomatic question. Technically, uh, some, I think what's worse is sometimes they will have other people do the bidding for them, which is really illegal because you're, then you're operating for another regime. Right, like I read about them like slashing tires in like the tour bus tires in Ottawa. Yeah, so, so what happened was, uh, you know, our driver would do a pre-trip inspection right. and he discovers a big cut on the front tire. So he takes it to the shop and says, oh, this cut is really interesting. So what's interesting about it? Well, it was cut in such a way that the tire would not deflate right away. It was just several layers uh, of the rubber had been cut so that on the highway at high speed when it expands, then uh, the tire would explode and maybe you lose control of the, of the vehicle. At the very least, you're going to be stalled for a long time. So when that happened, the very next day we got news of this, I was actually in Memphis and we were going to travel to Little Rock. So we inspected our truck and we discovered a very similar cut in our truck. And of course, we just had the tire replaced. And then that night, our bus in a rainstorm driving late at night from Memphis to Little Rock had a flat tire and were stopped on the side of the road for a while. So this went on for some time and then they started I mean, Do you know that the Chinese consulate was behind this? We can't prove it, of course. You know, they're not going to have the ambassador himself uh, with a badge saying, here, I'm going to cut your tire I mean, it could just now. be a coincidence, like all it these tire It could be a coincidence slashes. that we had all three tire I mean, especially in, in Canada, hours. I mean, there's full of criminals there. They're very nice though, very polite. Yeah. yeah. And then they start uh, trying to tamper with our, our, our gas tanks. So in one case, it was in Texas, like 3 a.m., this other pickup truck shows up next to our bus and then starts trying to do something with the gas tank. And then we have security now watching 24 hours a day. So then he drives off and eventually it's a, a, a chase and they're calling the police, they're chasing him. These are volunteers, mind you. And the police is coming over and the guy abandons his pickup truck and runs away. So whatever he was trying to do was so important that he was willing to give up his pickup truck and just give, run off. This happened in Atlanta. We had uh, people put corrosive material on a promotions car in Chicago. Th th these are actually life-threatening type of things where it would cut the cables so that you can actually have an accident. Um, but then, you know, we have people spying us, waiting for us in hotel lobbies, uh, people trying to take pictures, people trying to use universal remote controls to shut off our projection in the middle of a show, um, protests outside. The funny thing with the protests is they'll show up and it's like clockwork. Like the people who are doing this are clearly not very motivated. There's a, they show up at 9 o'clock and they leave at 5 p.m. The, the audience members are coming in, but they're gone. They took their banners and left. And this, is, this just happened just now in, uh, in South Korea where we were performing there. And it was the same group. They would travel from city to city. So yeah, who actually is that motivated to protest a performing arts company that would take two, three weeks off from work and travel with professionally made banners from city to city. To but then they leave at 5 p.m. Leave at 5 p.m., yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta take a break. Protesting is, is tough work. It's, it's tough work standing up. It's pretty cold sometimes, too.
So this is, this is not just a one-off thing. This is like a constant, you know, state, the sort of like state-coordinated type effort, it sounds like. Yeah. And one thing that they did, for example, was they would send emails to the theaters. So all these various tactics before were not working. They would send these letters to theaters saying, don't allow Shun to perform. And here in the States, people are like, what are you talking about? This is America. We perform whatever we want. And sometimes we would report this to the FBI. In some places, like Eastern Europe, like, you know, Romania, Moldova, Ukraine, this has a bit of traction because they're very susceptible to corruption. So you mean that so those, so those theaters have canceled the performances? They, we've had pressure. performances canceled. We showed up in a theater in Moldova after a three-day uh, bus trip from Turkey, and we show up at the theater. We get to the hotel uh, late at night. We show up at the theater the next morning for setup, and they say, you can't perform here. Your show's been canceled. And then all the media shows up, and they do all these interviews, and we find out what's going on later on. Somebody from Town Hall actually found me at a coffee shop, me a couple dancers, and told me, here's the backstory of what happened. We actually got visits from the Chinese embassy on a regular basis. They asked us at Town Hall to pressure them to cancel the performance. Then we met with the theater manager and they brought in the foreign minister. So they basically use a foreign ministry connection between the PRC and Moldova. Moldova is a very, very small and poor country mm -hmm. in Eastern Europe, mind you. Very beautiful, don't get me wrong, but you know, what is the diplomatic incentive here for China to be that close to Moldova? They get the foreign minister to do the bidding for them. And they sit in the theater, you got your foreign minister, your Chinese ambassador, your mayor, and this other executive, and the theater manager saying, cancel the performance. And the, the, this executive from town hall was saying, do not cancel it, you have a contract, There's, you're gonna have no legal backup if you do this. And they said, well, we have to do it. What they often use is a carrot and stick. So, right, if you cancel Shen Yun, we will bring some companies from China to perform instead. Uh, if you don't cancel Shen Yun, you'll never get a performance from China, you're not gonna get a visa. So we had a case in Berlin where the guy who was working there, uh, the theater manager, received a similar visit from the Chinese embassy just a couple years ago. And they did the same thing. You will not be allowed to visit China personally, and we will not bring any Chinese company to perform in your theater. This is the Chinese consulate telling him this? Chinese embassy in Berlin. Embassy. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and so how did he react? Well, he was from Eastern Europe, so he kind of knew the deal with communism. And he actually experienced the persecution himself, and he said, you know, goodbye. And that's what happens most of the time. Uh, especially in, in strong democracies. Like and the theaters just say, we're not going to be intimidated by this, we're going to let no, the show. No, in fact, yeah, they have an opposite res uh, effect on them. So, for example, in, in Australia, we're performing in Canberra, very first year on tour, mm -hmm. and after the show, we walk outside the theater and we see two parliament members standing there, and they, they say, actually, you know, we, we got a letter from the Chinese embassy saying, do not come see this show. And we're like, we hadn't heard of Shen Yun. What is this? This is interesting. Let's go check it out. And all the parliament members got the letter, and a bunch of them were there. Just could have had their meetings there and everything. Uh, Czech Republic, one time a TV station got a letter saying, do not interview Shen Yun, do not promote them. Like, Shen Yun? What's that? It's coming to town? Okay, we weren't planning on interviewing them. It's so like, okay, well, now so we're going to call them. them. So then they right. got our dancer and our concert master went and did this interview in, in the Czech Republic. And they said, this is the Czech Republic. Maybe this is how you do things in China. Here we decide who and who will not be in our show, who and who will not be on stage. And uh, we're very glad to have you and good luck with your performance. And this is really the phenomenon worldwide. It's kind of like free advertising. But the thing is, they do some things that are very tricky. So, for example, they have the, the China Daily is uh, the, the mouthpiece of the, the Communist Party in English. It's, it's for general consumption. You can buy it here on the street in New York City. Right. They actually had a paid insert that they put in the Washington Post and other newspapers in the U.S. and around the world pretending to be an article by the Washington Post Right. criticizing it's, it's the, the China Watch section. I've seen that in yeah. different papers. So you think, oh, the Washington Post right. has a cool China section. Right, and, and it's like a little font. It's like like paid advertisement, like at the very bottom yeah. or something. It's, just, it's, it's, kind very, of like it's a, a very little font. But it's formatted like an article. It's like in 3D or it something. It looks yeah. like a, yeah. It, doesn't, it looks like a regular article. Right. So unless you're aware of this dynamic and you're aware of all the forces behind the scenes trying to do this, you're not going to pick up and, on And that. they're using this sort of state sanctioned China Watch section to criticize. Yeah, and the title Shen was something Yun. like Shen Yun is a blasphemy to the arts. It's something very over the top, you know, communist sounding. Right. And then this was Washington Post, it was the Wall Street Journal, it was in Melbourne, it was in Nashville, it was in London Telegraph, all over the place. And so you think, oh, all these newspapers, uh, you know, really don't like Shen Yun. And then they would send emails to theaters. But it's not that they don't like Shen Yun, they're just happy to take lots and lots of money in exchange for pretending it's, oh, it's not my problem if it criticizes Shen yes. Yun, right? Yes, money turns out to be the currency. Funny that. Yeah, uh, but what we've really seen is that it, it doesn't really affect us that much. Uh, the, the recent thing that they're doing is they're trying to kind of tweak, and I can't prove this, but they're trying to, it seems like there's an attempt to mess with Google's rankings of Shen Yun articles. So if you go to Google and Google Shen Yun, it'll come up with, you know how they have suggested fields for things to ask, right. uh, you have to search for it, they'll be like, what's the deal with Shen Yun? Is Shen Yun a cult? These kinds of like really bizarre things that, you know, where's your Shen Yun reviews, whereas uh, Shen Yun performing arts, it's a very basic thing. So it's not like, it's not like the Shen Yun website is like the, the Shen Yun first website thing. Is, still, is still there, you know, maybe there's a paid ad for Shen Yun website still at the top. Then, you know, there's Wikipedia, there's a bunch of stuff. Wikipedia is this whole other battlefield where there's constant people trying to put negative stuff about Shen Yun at the top, and, oh, yeah. and then the editors go in and they, they fight over it, and it goes back and forth. You, you can see on a Wiki daily basis. Wikipedia fights, it's just, you can never win those.
yeah, it's just, I guess it's a war of attrition. And then there's these few articles that had negative reviews about Chin Yun. You know, we've done this, we did perform in front of a million people last year. You know, I'm on stage, I see the audience reaction. I, I know how positive it is. I walk through the lobby, I talk to people, I've seen interviews with people. But yeah, there's some negative articles out there, not that many, but then somehow they're always at the top of Google. If you go to Yahoo, you go to Bing, nowhere to be found. And I remember, for example, yeah, there's, there's just a bunch of these. It's just funny because there's been so much news recently of like Google, you know, using editorial, you know, using people to actually control what goes in the search results instead of using yeah. the algorithm. So here's what I don't know. I mean, I use Google like everybody else to find things. I mean, maybe you use a different search engine. You should just try Baidu. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, just go to the Chinese embassy, you know, dot, dot gov and, and see what their perspective on everything is. But um, I don't know if it's Google doing this, if there's somebody any insight in Google, or is somebody in China who's figured out some sort of algorithm to mess with the search engine optimization rankings. They're doing, uh, you know, uh, inbound linking, uh, you know, how they post comments linking different things. They have the whole 50 cent army doing things, which we know uh, they've used for many years to attack whoever they happen to not like at the time. And, you know, they've hacked our website. They hacked our website one year at the very beginning of ticket sales season. Oh, good. So the Chinese hackers are also in. It's, it's like, it's like every, everything from like the slashing tires to the writing letters to the theaters to the getting overseas Chinese students to protest to getting, you know, to that like hacking. Like that's just like, like every aspect of this type of I guess in other contexts, we'd often call it subversion, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, and, and, and then if you take a step back, it's like, why? I mean, did you not have bigger issues to deal with? This is what's concerning in the performing arts company outside of China. Well, you're, you're clearly a huge threat. I mean, it's, uh, it's a yeah, lot of resources. Apparently. And it's not I mean, they, ha they haven't done that to China uncensored, so obviously we're not nearly as much of a threat. Well, maybe you'll join the party one day. I mean, certainly, if we're communicating over email, they now know about you as well. Oh, that's, that's good I to see. I think they probably discovered you before. But the thing is, you know, it is a threat to them, but the reality is that our performers, me, me personally, I've been to China, I've spent uh, time studying and working throughout Asia. I would love to bring the show to China. And I'm, I'm, I'm the white guy in the show. I mean, most of the performers are ethnic Chinese from China, from around the world. They, what their dream is to bring the show back to China because it's about celebrating traditional Chinese culture, a culture that had almost been entirely lost because of the Cultural Revolution, the anti-five and anti-three and anti rightists and all this stuff that they did there. And now many generations of people who have been brought up under the regime not really knowing what traditional Chinese culture is about. And people that are heroes are portrayed as villains. And here we have a, a show that's bringing up these stories. And actually, this is what this person was actually about. And here's the, the virtue that this person represents in Chinese history. And why so share so it you're with subverting them. 70 years of communist cultural destruction. At I mean, the very least, 70 years. Do you really think they're going to let you into China? So, so people who are in China and can afford to, they will fly out to Taiwan especially, but to Japan, Vancouver, LA, wherever they can go. And, and we even had people from the, the Communist Party's like, bureaucracy come to us after the show. Like They'll tell somebody through in the really, lobby. Really, they like, secretly come to Shen Yun. They go, jiao, jiao, which means like, go, you know, we support you. Good luck uh, huh. after the show. You know, we were sent here to spy, but we like your show. So good luck. We had dancers from China who just admire the standards of Shen Yun, especially now that we're really established, they'll come and try to learn and try to mimic stuff. But there's, there's of course, the highest form of flattery. But also, some people try to defect, and so they're really on the guard for that. They try to block performers from leaving China to join us. So it's just a matter of time. And on the website, we get constant emails from China saying, hey, when you please come perform in China. We can't wait. Can we buy a DVD? You know, what can we do? We really are, are rooting for you guys. And our performers can't wait to go there to perform. But this is the reality right now, that if you really want to see a performance of traditional Chinese culture, you have to go to Lincoln Center, or you have to go to Taiwan. You can't go see it this way in Beijing. Yeah, you guys have like a, I saw something like 150 cities in the next six months. Yeah, so we have seven groups that tour around the world at the same time. Uh, each company will do, you know, 25, 30 cities. Uh, usually we're somewhere for two, three days, sometimes two, three weeks, depending. Uh, but yeah, it's 150 cities or so. Which is to say the Chinese Communist Party is not very good at stopping you. No, <laughs> they're not. And uh, like I said, it's free advertising. Uh, you know, and then they got more and more work. The first year, we were just one group with 30 cities. You know, that's it's 30 letters to <laughs> so. and multiple copies to send out. I mean, but you're really just creating so much work for those poor communist officials. Well, it's, it's providing employment for all those people posting the comments. That's I true. You're, you're a job creator. Yeah. There you go. Well, uh, well good luck uh, on your upcoming tour. And, Thank you. And uh, make sure to check those bus tires. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's a new tactic every year, but, you know, it doesn't stop us. Uh, we, we really want to just go perform, and we, we really hope that we can perform in China someday. But in the meantime, we'll just put up with this stuff. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. Thank you.